Welcome to the 80th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome to returning viewers and friends. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could be here. We have lots happening today. Colleen's been busy knitting, of course. I've done some polymer, polymer clay babies that mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about in the craft section. So you're not going to want to miss that. But before we begin all that, Colleen's going to talk about what we're wearing. So first of all, we're going to talk about what May is wearing. And she is wearing a hack of the Katie Shaw. So what was happening is the very first time I made the Katie Shaw, I was knitting along and then I held it up to myself and I said, May, what do you think? She goes, I would love that. And I thought, well, I know she's not going to wear a big shawl. Is there a way for me to figure it out? So this pattern is a paid for pattern, but it's a lovely pattern and there's parts of it that I really, really like. They do some work with some an eye cord edging um, and this stitch that's in there, um, they call it the eyeball stitch. Lots of fun to do and it really has an impact. So what I did was I took those pieces that I really liked and I made a triangle of sorts, held it up to May, and then all I had to do was to take the two ends and stitch them together. And so for May, it's just over the head, looks like great it. with your jacket mm -hmm. so it's really good now before you even said that that was what I when I put this on it reminds me of the first time you ever I ever knew about hacking a pattern right and then you mentioned about this was one of the first things that you did but exactly. yeah this is what uh, reminds me of the very first time you ever did that so. exactly so the yarn is lovely it's Barocco comfort sock um, and it's really nice it's 50% nylon and 50% acrylic and it's um it's a nice weight and it's really it's soft. soft. So it's really would be nice to have around your neck. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, and I think you could use it and make the big shawl if you want to. So that's what May is wearing. And what I'm wearing is the Reversible Undulating Waves Cowl by Laura Nelkin. So it's Laura Nelkin. It's Every got time some I hear beads. Laura Nelkin, I think beads. <laughs> exactly. So it does have some beads. Now this is not, doesn't come from a kit from Laura Nelkin. I actually put it together. So the in one of her um, kits, she had used this yarn, which is the Three Irish Girls Yarn Ink, and it's the Adorn Lux, which is beautiful yarn, by the way. And the color is Kathmandu. And I loved the color because it has some brights, it has some darker colors, and it's really, really nice. So Laura Nelkin is a wonderful designer and she's also really good at getting back to you. So I had emailed her and said, I really want to use the Katmandu colorway. Can you give me a hint of where I could order beads and what kind of beads do I need? And so she sent me back an email right away and I'm really, really happy with it. I like the the bead color there. It really exactly. goes well. And exactly. I find that that would go well with the dark. And I yes. think if you wore something light, it would go exactly. well with it Exactly. Well, my initial plan today was I was going to put something light on. And I went through my closet, thought, don't know where it is. And then I thought, it's in the laundry. <laughs> Lo and behold, it's in the laundry. So needless to say, I put on some black. It worked out well because May was wearing her black. So don't you find that amazing? I have a closet full of clothes right. that I haven't worn for years. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I want to wear is in the laundry. Exactly. How does that happen? I and don't know. Nothing in that closet is what I want to wear. <laughs> So my, my whole plan this year yes. is to go through that closet and exactly. decide, is, yep. does this bring me joy? Does this make me feel, um, you know, uh, good in it? You know, we've been watching this show with Hans, who's a, he's a... Tan de, France. Tan France. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> we like Tan France, and it's a decorating show that's on Netflix. Right. And it's called... Um, Queer Eye. No, no, no. Well, do watch that. He's in that show. But, yeah. Oh, but he has it on. Next in Fashion. Yes. It's called, it's a Netflix, and it's called Next in Fashion. And what it is, is a bunch of designers get together, well, right. and there's a competition. Right. And they have to design clothes really quickly. Right. They're amazing. They can sew things like nothing. Exactly. So if you get an opportunity, that would be a good show to exactly. watch. Exactly. But that has inspired me fashion wise oh, to kick go. it up a notch. <laughs> There we go. Because you get to a certain age, and I don't know where you and I would shop, really. Like, I, I don't know, know where our vintage, where you go to get clothes. They should have a designer at our age mm -hmm. that could design clothes Absolutely. that would fit us and, and that. Because I find if you go into a store, they're all like, um, <laughs> jeans are like this. Right. And the tops are tight and... And they're just young style that you can't really wear. Right. And then all the 
our age group clothes wise maybe it's different in america but i know here in canada because we used to go to america to shop and we did but here in canada where do you go to buy nice good question good clothes that don't look like you know old lady clothes right exactly. we are old ladies <laughs> but we don't want to wear old lady clothes that's right so that's right. anyway that's just my little bit of a thing but so he has inspired both you and i right. really um to go through the closet and to really put exactly. things on that make you feel good right and it absolutely. makes a difference on how people carry themselves yes absolutely. i notice on the show yeah absolutely yeah anyway that's just a, a, on the side <laughs> <laughs> all about fashion yes. all about design it's great so that's what we're wearing and next we're going to talk about finished objects my first finished object is another hack from the katie shawl and that's by cozy up designs now what I wanted was I was using the Katia Ombre set that I bought, purchased from Wool Time in Ottawa. Now they have this pattern that comes with it, but what I wanted to do is change it up a little bit. And I had seen one on Ravelry that had done some eyelets every time there was a color chain. So I thought that was great. And as I mentioned before, I really like an eye cord edge. So here is what I ended up with. Wow. So this is that shawl that you hacked again. Yes. That's cool. Like, people don't mind hacking. Like, they don't mind you hacking. You know what? I don't think so. It's not that I'm saying this is my absolute design. Yes, I did kind of figure something out. Um, but I'm using an I-cord edge. And I like an I-cord edge. And the reason why I took it from a pattern that I knew I liked. So okay. I just knew how it would go. Well, this turned out amazing i think i love this like in between the colors exactly i do too because then it's not it gives you a little bit of space between the colors now this is garter stitch which was lovely tv knitting absolutely i could absolutely block this and i'm just going to pull this so you can see so garter will open up that much and i could make it a bit bigger i haven't blocked it yet because i need to try it on and i need to see what i want to do about about whether i should block it and I might because I just, as it stands, I'm not sure it wraps quite how I need it to do. So I have to give it a try on and see what I think. But and I this love is, the colors. And this is the edging that you like so much. This Yes. What so do you call this again? I-cord edging. So I, it was an I-cord bind off, I-cord edging all the way down. Nice. Yep. It's really nice. I love the colors. Yes, I do too. Love now, it. you'll look at this. I'm glad, actually glad you turned it around. So I had to make sure that when I changed the color... Um, I changed it on the same side all the time. So I had to do, I have a little scale that I use and I had to do some work on that, but it worked really well. So the last row that I did was the eyelet row and then the next time coming across was the change in the yeah, yarn color. Turned out great. You happy I, with how that turned I'm out? I'm really, really liking yeah, it. Yeah, I really yeah. like that. Very nice, yeah. clean We cut. had quite an interesting time because there's a couple of oh. colors that are almost the same darkness, but different colors. And I had done it and then thought, oh, I don't, I think I picked the wrong one, which I was amazed that I had picked the wrong one. I think we had this color over here. No, it was these two colors right here. So those two colors, did I need to switch them? And I thought I did. <laughs> I asked May about it. She agreed. I ripped it out. And then when I started to knit with this color in, it didn't look right. So you had to rip all this out. So I had to so uh, knit this again, and it was okay. It's garter stitch. Knitting. I know, yeah. but I remember that. And but I think it was the lighting. It was in the evening. It yes, was only absolutely. had a little bit of lighting on yeah. there. So that's something we have to be exactly. kind of uh, aware about the next time. Well, ask me in the morning when it's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the plan. Yeah. I will do that. For the sure. next time, I'm kind of just sort of like, yeah, 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 whatever. Exactly. All right, so my next finished object, once again, is another pattern that I hacked. Now, this is called, I think it's the, the Oneta Scarf. It's by Fairmount Fibers Design Team from Manos del Uruguay. And I have knit this shawl and loved it, but I was using um, Leo and Roxy um, sock, and I used their marled color, and I wanted it to look a little bit like a work sock. This turned out nice too. Yeah, it really did. It so blocked soft. beautifully. So there it is. Now you know I wouldn't put red. I put purple. <laughs> and I'm really happy with this. And it's funny what makes you not happy. So 
because I didn't have a whole lot of that cream at the time that I knit it, there was only like three rows on this and I didn't like it. And I ended up ordering some other for a different project and I thought, I am just going to put that in there. And now I'm really happy with it and yeah. will gladly wear it. It's beautiful. It's nice and soft it and light. Is. That's blocking will soften things oh, up. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, But it's absolutely. just really light. Exactly. Love it. And that Love would it. go nice. I've got a black coat. and It would look nice with the red too, just saying the navy. Navy too, you could put around uh, the stripe. I think she's thinking. <laughs> Maybe like if you would. Yeah, I like that. There you go. Do you have some of that yarn left? Um, I do. There you go. Okay. So that's that. I see a cowl in my future. Yes. There's always a cowl <laughs> in May's future, but that's good because she likes them and she wears them and it makes me happy. All right. My last finished objects, and there's two pairs of these, are the Newborn Booties by Priscilla Uloho. I'm hoping I'm saying it right. Now you've tried various booties and you always seem to come back to this particular yes, one. Yes, and it is a free pattern. I'm just going to let you know that. So I made, I'll let you hold those ones oh, up. nice. So that has navy on it. It, look, it might look a little black, but it is navy. And then this is the red you were talking about. Yeah, that's nice. And the, the gray marled color is the Bernat Softy Baby, as is the white. And then the red and the navy are Patton's Canadian, I think. Patton's asterisk. It's Patton's. And I just had little bits left, so I'm not 100% sure. Those are great. Exactly. And they go wonderful with my polymer clay project that you're not going to want to miss in the craft section. Right. So when I ask you about your finished objects... The craft section. <laughs> the craft section. <laughs> there we go. So those are my finished objects. And next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is a shawl. It's actually done, but it's not blocked and it really needs to be blocked. So it is the Nurma Lintu by Heidi Allender. Beautiful pattern. It's great, it's some nice lace knitting. If you're not used to lace knitting, this is a great one to do. It's a one skein shawl and that's what I have left which is not much. Yarn chicken, yarn chicken, yarn chicken. So you can see that there's these lines of lace and I wasn't sure I was going to have enough. So I was leaving it and then I thought, well, I'll do it. Um, but there's a Pico bind off and I just, I wasn't sure. So I wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, but I actually had enough. Now you can see, by the way, this yarn, oh my goodness. It's Life in the Long Grass Twist Socks. So it's 80% merino, 20% nylon. It is a beautiful nice. yarn. Is it nice to work with? Yes, it, it nice. is. So oh, I it's like the same color that's in the pattern. Was that on purpose? Or no. <laughs> it just worked out that way? You know what? I wanted, I've always wanted to do some Life in the Long Grass. I did. And it is made in Ireland, which is part of the reason why I wanted to do it. <laughs> and I was placing an order at Knit Stitch in London. And I thought, I'm just going to put a skein in. And I love this color. It is called Blue Dusk. And I thought, this is a great color for in the summer over a white t-shirt if it's kind of cool evening. I have all these plans. It's a great one skein. It, it, really, it really is. is. Nice. And this lace is going to open up beautifully. Like, I can hardly wait to block right. it. It'd be great for the spring. That's really what nice I'm color, thinking. Yeah. So I'm really, really happy with it. I can't believe how much it matches that. You know, and I didn't Did you even, even notice? No. And it's funny because the there's a certain amount that you need, and I didn't have enough, like it, in the skein itself. Now, the good thing is designers usually leave a certain percentage so that if your um, tension is a little different or your gauge is a little different, then... And so that's part of the reason I was stressed out. I was weighing, I was measuring, I was planning, I was thinking, oh my gosh, do I need to change it? But everything worked out well. I had absolutely enough to get it done, so I was thrilled. So now I'm gonna block it, and then you're gonna see it. I'll do the before and after um, that I've started doing as far as blocking. So that's my first finished, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's my first work in progress. Now my next work in progress is a pair of socks, and we're gonna talk about hacking patterns again. So I was going to use the pattern that I always use, which is Katie Lou's sock pattern. Started it, but the yarn that I'm using was a little thicker. So it is Mary Maxim cotton socks. 
and it is 56% um, cotton and 35% uh, acrylic and 9% polyamide. I didn't see the 9%. I thought that doesn't add up to 100, so something's wrong. <laughs> so anyway, um, what I've done is I've placed some order for some places. And so what we're going to do next week is we're going to talk about ordering online. Right. And because somebody had suggested that that's something that we could do is exactly. uh, see where the places are. And we like to listen to people's comments. Exactly. And we take your suggestions seriously. Exactly. And we try to accommodate. Exactly. So I picked some places from the States. I picked from places from Canada. We're going to talk about um, shipping. We're going to talk about things to watch for. Um, Plus it gave Colleen an excuse to order from all these different places. I said, it's just for the <laughs> podcast, May. It's just for the podcast. <laughs> I'll just so, order from here and see how they are. Exactly. So it just kept arriving at the door, but I thought, I know what that is. And I was buying things that were going to be gifts for other people. Right. And but this I, is but I'm sure you're going to find that very helpful as far as exactly. ordering. And, and even for myself, it was good because I, I wrote down when I ordered it. And I wrote down some information about the place I was ordering it from. And then I wrote down when it arrived. Oh. And so I've got the information about how long it takes for things to come. Well, that's a good idea. Come from the States. To us, and come from Canada to us. So, so you had good. fun shopping, I take it. I did. <laughs> so this yarn is for um, these is a pair of socks. It's for my son who lives in Hong Kong. Lovely yarn. It's so soft. This will be light for Hong Kong. Isn't that it? was my plan, and I know that he had, wears khaki pants to work. So I thought this will be perfect, which is what I'm going to do. So I started off Katie Lou's sock powder, and that starts off with 72 stitches. And I had mm, probably three or four inches knit, and I went, mm, these are gonna be way too big. So I thought, okay, I could hack that pattern. I thought, you know, I can figure something out. So I thought I'm gonna do a 64 stitch sock. I did a knit one, purl one rib. Then I thought, I'm just gonna do a knit three, purl one. And I thought, I know where I'm gonna get in trouble, and then I'm gonna be able to fix it. So what happens when you do a knit three, purl one, all the way through, at some point in time, across the top of your sock, you're gonna have knit three, purl one, all the way across, and you're gonna be left with a purl one. And I thought, I could just leave the purl one, but then you're gonna have a ridge on one side and not the other side. Symmetry is my life, I like symmetry. <laughs> so what I did, I'm explaining to you what I did. I knew that the sock was a little looser anyway, so on the row that I started knitting the top of the sock, I. Um, knit the last knit stitch with that purl stitch as a knit stitch. So now it's knit three at this end and knit three at this end. So the top of the sock is going to be symmetrical. I am going to have to um, add that other stitch back in, but I don't need to do it until I get to the toe. Okay, well... Um, that's a long story, but that's what I do. That is a long story, and I'm glad knitters will understand you because it's like you're talking a foreign language <laughs> here, and I have no idea, but I'm yes. sure you understand what you're talking about. Now, I just want to let you know that I um, am using the heel flap and heel turn from the Shell Cove Socks. So I just grabbed a, a pattern that had a 64-stitch count in it, and then I was able to do that. So I'm using that from K. Jones Bakery Bears. Nice. All right, so that's that. So it's going to seem like it's all about socks right now. So that is for my son. Why is it all about socks right now? Well, you know, I have lots of socks oh, here. Oh, I know. You're doing a tutorial for knit two to time socks. We're going to be working Okay, about it is like I paid her money because here we go. <laughs> so this you have seen because we talked about the texture last time. But I'm going to show you where I am. So I am to the point... And this is the Jemima socks by Kay Jones. I am to the point that I am doing the gusset decreases. And when you knit two at a time, this is very an interesting process that you have to go through. So what I've done all the way through is I've been taking pictures, taking pictures, taking pictures. Now, when I get to this point is when I need my videographer, namely mm -hmm. May. I need her to watch what I'm doing because I have to explain the process. And I also kind of have come up with a template that works for me so I know what row I'm on. I can read my knitting, but sometimes it's nice just to know that you, what you've figured out how to do it. I love these textures. And there's the door. It's probably Amazon. Okay, well, let's but go I'm going to go get that. I'll be right back. All right. 
We're back. That was a package. Uh, we'll open that up later and we'll maybe talk about what that was on our next podcast. That sounds good. So let's take a look at these socks again. So this is the Premier Yarns Wool Free Sock. And I'm really happy with it. There's that lovely nice bit of texture. purple. texture. Yeah, I like the texture. Two at a time. I know. Now, I talked to Ellen in Scotland. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't talk to her personally. My mom talked to Ellen. You're out of breath. You ran up the stairs. <laughs> ran up the stairs to get the door. Um, but Ellen did uh, respond to our... Um, made a comment right. that in Scotland you do two at a time sweaters. That is amazing. Like you do the two backs, the two sides. Oh, two, that makes total sense. Yeah, but only in like small kids or right, like, exactly. baby stuff. Exactly. And she said she does them in two colors. That is a knows. great idea. Yeah. Exactly. Well, anyway, two at a time socks, two at a time sweaters. There we go. All right. So we've got a pair of socks working for my son. And I'm going to send something for his girlfriend when I do that. Send him his socks. These are the Turkish Bed Socks by Church Mouse Yarns and Tees. Now, the pattern itself is by Kit Hutchin. Um, and I got that off of Ravelry, so I just want to make sure I get the right designer because it doesn't say that on the pattern. And this is going to look like I've got very holy socks. <laughs> Not two at a time with these? That Not would be two too at a time. It is very complicated. I've knit these before. I really like this yarn, by the way. because I'm not I, understanding this. but I, I'm going to explain it in a sec. So this is Mary Maxim Bamboo Mosaic. To be honest with you, I didn't realize that it was self-striping. And I have two balls of this, so I'm happy. So where you see these lovely holes, those get stitched together. So it you has to, to do with the construction. With yes. But I just have to mattress stitch, and I like mattress stitching, so it's not a problem. So um, these are designed. Um, it says they make great gifts as they're easy to fit, and they don't take a lot of yarn. They're nice for around the house and terrific for travel. And some people like to wear them in their clogs, it says. So they're really nice socks, and yeah. this stuff is so soft. What did you call this, a mattress stitch? Mattress stitch. Mattress? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So it's the way you stitch it Is that it a up. common thing? Mattress? Yes. Oh. It is. It is a very common thing. So I'm really, I'm looking forward to that. I just wanted to get the sock finished. Um, I thought I was going to do that, but I might actually do the mattress stitch and then uh, that will get the fit better. Nice. So the good thing is my feet and my son's girlfriend's feet are similar in size. So that'll work. So those are my works in progress. And May, how about you? Again, crafts. Okay, perfect. Uh, next, we're going to talk about our craft adventure. Well, Colleen and I have been busy on our craft adventures. We're always downstairs doing something exactly. or creating something. But it's really cool when we're able to do a project together. Absolutely. So what Colleen would do is she would knit something, some little booties mm -hmm. that we talked about. Yep, here's another pair. Yep. And what, what I would do is make these little babies, these polymer clay babies, uh, to match what Colleen's knitting. So it's kind of a... Exactly, and, and for some of them, I've made hats as well. Right, so that is perfect. So we had these little boxes I painted to match the outfit. It's really cute. These babies it is are cute. impressive. Now, I haven't glued the babies on to these boxes. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet because these babies can be used for cake toppers. And for or showers. Showers, yeah, showers. Or I've seen them on top of... Um, you know, baby face cloths and oh, that type that's of thing. Great it's idea. so cute. But I just put them in these little box, painted up the box to look like exactly. that. Exactly. So it's it'd be a nice really little cute. gift for somebody. Absolutely. Yeah. Very so, nice. So um, I'll just show you the different colors that we've been doing. Okay. Uh, the green one here. Uh, I think there's little green boots in there. Nope. The green boots are right over there. Okay. Little green boots. May was really good at getting these colors, by the way. Matching that up. Mm -hmm. That's Very cute. Very nice. Okay, I'll just and there's this one here. It's cute. Put that up again. They're not glued on. There's the matching ones over there. And there's the matching boots for that. That's kind of cute. It's a nice color. You've done a great work with. And these. I kind of ran out of boxes, so I <laughs> found this box. It says just for you. And there's a little hat that goes with these ones also. Okay. So that was kind of cute too. Very nice. So those were great. Now my first polymer play, clay baby. This is my very first one that I did, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you can see that, but I, it was very soft. The clay was soft, right, right. and then I decided to dress it. Okay. So my hand prints, fingerprints, squished. <laughs> uh, I was really not very happy with it, it at all. It was a smushed like I, baby. It was a smushed baby, <laughs> <laughs> and all those fine little details exactly. aren't there. And the mold that you have is amazing. So, 
Yes. So then the next time I thought, how am I going to do that? And the, the knitting actually turned out quite nice. Yes, on the it's first really, really nice. Yeah, it's great. But um, anyway, so the next time I did it, I baked the babies uh, for half the time. Then they were okay. a little bit solid. So then when I was dressing them, I wasn't getting all my fingerprints oh, squishing them. Oh, that's great. That's great. And, uh, so it kept all those really nice little details, like, like the fingers and everything you can see in there. So they're exactly. great. Exactly. Now, somebody had suggested, Colleen, that we... Um, you know, make a video of some of the things that we do. Okay, so, that's a and, great and that idea, being yeah. said, when I remember, um, I'm going to try and do that. So, with the baby, I do have a video that I will attach. Okay. That is how I went about making these babies Perfect. and what, what I did and how I did that. So, exactly. I can attach that up. So, but it was a great little project. I made quite a few of them. And I remember exactly. when we went out, when I made this first baby and we were in a restaurant, and I said, <laughs> Colleen, I got to home. I got to put those, because I made it. Quite a few of them. Yes, you did. I really have to get those babies in the oven. And, said, and you were like, shh. I'm like, what? What? She says, you just said put the babies in the oven and people are looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, it was very funny. It was. So, um, but I like to make quite a few at, at once. So um, the oven's on and on anyway. But I've learned a lot since the very beginning. When I looked at the beginning one right, here. Right, exactly. I've learned a lot, so... Anyway, I hope you enjoy that video, and that's what I've been busy doing, making these babies mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and dressing them. And, exactly, uh, and I love how you you, you do um, like makeup almost on them. Right. So, and what do you use to do that? Uh, pastels. But aren't pastels big? But you have to like scrape off the pastels. Oh, okay. So you make it like it's makeup. Yeah, you scrape them all the color off that oh, you need. Okay. Now a lot of people that are into makeup and all that kind of stuff, they could probably do a better job than I do. No, the, I love what you do. But, They're but, so uh, cute. Yeah. Oh my anyway, goodness. well, if you're interested, watch the video. If not, you don't have to watch it. But it, it might be a little interesting for you to see how we go about doing exactly. that. And one other thing on the video, um, I use my hand to make the knitting. Okay. I use a hand, but but uh, as you've done, right. use the extruder. But right. Not everybody had an extruder, so right, absolutely. Um, and then you get an even um, length of the stuff, right. a polymer right. clay. Exactly. But, yeah, interesting that first one with no. Anyway, you know what? <laughs> you have learned so much, and you are. What I love about you is that you're so brave about trying new things. Yes, we are different in that sense. I, I'm like, uh, and emotion. you're so good at what you do when you do something. You're really good at it. But it, you kind of hesitate. I have to think it through nine times before it gets started. Yeah, me, I just dive right in. Make, <laughs> like, I make mistakes like this. Like, I make mistakes, and I think, oh, not doing that again. How am I going to fix that? Right. Generally, when I talk about me doing something really wrong for the first time, then, <laughs> anyway, it all works out, and it's right. good that we're not all the same, too. Exactly. Anyway, though, those are my crafts and your and crafts. It was great to work together exactly. on that. Exactly. I think we made a great team in those crafts. And we do that. We do when I make my uh, wooden beds and you make the bedding. It's kind of mm -hmm. nice when we do uh, group projects. So. Right. Yes. So next we're going to talk about our souvenirs. My first souvenir is a gift that I got from May's mom. And what it is, is this lovely... It is, I have to, I'm going to have to take it off to explain to you what it is. It's magnetic. It's magnetic. So it's got a, there's a front and a back to it. And you just sandwich whatever you want to hold together with that. Um, so I'm just going to take it off. It's a pretty heavy duty magnet. It is a heavy duty magnet. So there's the front and there's the back. And it just snaps together. And then it's going to hold right. any kind of scarf. You could put it, it on a really lapel. Nice, yeah. Absolutely. Nice shawl pin for anything. For exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm really very happy. Thank you so much. Yeah, really great idea, but, you know, to get it apart. But I know, it's like, did I just cut my fingernails? Maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> but they're, that's really nice. Exactly. Really really, so I really, really like that. So that was really a lovely gift, so I'm appreciating that very much. Now, as far as my souvenirs, it involves a little bit of makeup. You needed more? Well, it actually wasn't makeup, so I'll explain the thing. So there is a company that's called ELF. So it's E.L.F. which stands for Eyes, Lips, and Face. And what it is, it is a brand that has makeup at a reasonable price. 
um, like a very good price. And the reason why I'm even bringing up what I'm going to talk about is because they've come up with this bit of a new collection. Now, oftentimes you'll see it in the States and it takes a while to get up to Canada, but I actually found it. So my first thing that I picked up was this lovely thing. You found it where? At Walmart. In Canada. In Canada. So this is ELF Cookies and Dreams, just the cream putty primer. Now I'm gonna take it out of the package because it's a gimmick and I fell for it. <laughs> there you go. All right, so this is a putty primer, so you put it on before you put your makeup on. I had watched uh, a YouTube person, Emily Knoll, who does a great job, and she mentioned that she really, really liked that primer. But I just liked that it looked like a, an Oreo cookie. Oh, is that why? Yeah, absolutely. Very nice and soft. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. And so you just put that under your underneath makeup. your makeup and the makeup sits better. So that was the first thing. Then it smells nice too. Like it's not strong. But no, it's is it like a little bit? Vanilla. I haven't. I vanilla? Mean, yeah, vanilla. Exactly. So oh, it is nice. Mm -hmm. I see. She's done more with it than I have because I hadn't even taken it out <laughs> of the package. You're probably printed that I've touched it. It's You're like, probably, what are you doing? I know, with Colleen. It? She's probably going. I can't believe she's touching my makeup. <laughs> anyway, sorry that's about okay. That. <laughs> All right. There's no apology necessary. <laughs> All right. So then, other thing that I purchased was um, from the same collection. It's called Cookies and Dreams uh, Milkshake Overnight Mask. And these are things that if you have a teenager in your life or you just want to have some fun with them, this mask would work really well. You can either use it as 10 to 15 minutes on and then wash it off, or you can put it on over your um, cream when you go to bed and then leave it on. And once again, Emily Noel was talking about that in her recent uh, podcast and just talked about how much she liked it. Emily needs to stop talking. <laughs> She's really good. I know sometimes when you get um, somebody on YouTube, they're talking for just the young folks and somebody of my right. vintage, but she's really, really good. I, she's actually well, one I'm of the sure first people. Well, I'm sure she is. It's just that exactly. when she talks, we end up having more products. All right. Well, there was only <laughs> one more product, and this is called Single Scoop Face Sponge. And there it is. Once again, same collection. And so the idea is you wet the sponge and it gets bigger and then you can use it to put foundation on you know when i see this what it reminds me of what you do you even know what this would remind me of a sponge you probably wouldn't no when we watched dr paul yes that this was in one of the dog's stomach oh <laughs> <laughs> yes. remember yes they couldn't figure out what it was and the and the husband says i know exactly what that is it's my my wife's makeup sponge that's in the dog's stomach. Oh dear. So the good that's... news is we don't have a dog. And the good news is... We wish is... we did, but we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Um, now, let's talk about e.l.f. So I'm just going to show you these two things, which I bought a long time ago. So this isn't a new souvenir. This is, this is for my benefit. This is, yeah, I'm just... You know why? Because I have to walk past Colleen's makeup desk. That I, I gave her this um, desk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I gave up my desk space yes you did she was I gave up my workspace and I thought well there'll be lots of room because there's drawers in it and there's two cupboards yeah. and great space on yeah. top and um it's covered like it's full <laughs> of makeup and makeup brushes and makeup and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and lights you've got really nice uh lighting there yes you, what kind of a lighting is that it's like it's on the mirror itself Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. so there's yeah, lighting, there's no lighting. And yeah, there's just makeup and makeup. And so when I see you, you buying more makeup, I think, where exactly are you going to put that? Well, the nice <laughs> thing is about that mask is it really isn't makeup. <laughs> I, I just rationalize all the time. <laughs> all right, so I want to tell you prices in Canada so you can look at prices. So this first thing, it is called a, a blush highlight duo or a face duo. And so you get blush and a bit of a highlighter. And so that's $3.97. Oh, really? That's it. So I'm just showing you that you don't have to buy really high-end makeup to have fun. And I use this blush all the time. So I have this upstairs and that lovely makeup table is in the basement. So if I'm in a hurry in the morning, then I'm just upstairs. So that's that. Now, the next thing is called an eyeshadow quad. And it's $3.97 as well. And so it has four colors. It's This one has two mattes and two sh ones that have a little bit of sparkle in them. Once again, same idea. Keep it upstairs. And so the nice thing is um, if you have 
a younger person in your life and you want to buy them a few little treats if you get them a little bit of this it's not expensive it's good quality and they would enjoy it and if maybe you just want to buy them the mask and they can you can both you know if you're a grandma and you got a granddaughter who's eight or nine and you want to have some fun then both put your mask on and sit and talk about life while you're letting your mask dry good idea now i'm sure you have high-end makeups of this like like more expensive than this uh, i do i'm pretty sure you would i do <laughs> i do you probably have the whole gamut but i'm just thinking you knowing that you would have that and yeah. this does it compare pretty good? yes absolutely really yeah i really really like it so that just proves to show you don't have to get the, the best you do of the not best. exactly you just have to know some some products you do have to right. get what you pay for and exactly and be careful. that's the nice thing i understand that sometimes when youtubers talk i think oh i just would like to have <laughs> that but the nice thing is they will talk about um, if you buy this is less expensive than the high end and actually better product right so there's some people that they call them dupes where the thing that is um Let's say there's something that's super high end that this will be as good as the other. And you know what? Our friend Tan that we were talking about, the designer of the mm -hmm. clothes, yep. he had a three thousand dollar suit he held up, yep. and he had a seventy nine dollar suit yep. that he held up, and he said, "Guess which one I'm wearing?" And he was wearing the seventy nine dollar suit, and you right. wouldn't even tell the difference. And why did? What did he have to do to make sure he, he could, just had a tailor? Or had something. it tailored properly. Yeah, Pro exactly. Had it tailored properly. You yeah. had to have the the expensive suit tailored too. Right. So. Yeah. Worked I out. just don't have a tailor for makeup. No. <laughs> you don't need one. You're good. You're oh, good thank that. you. So that is my souvenirs. And May, how about souvenirs for you? You know, um, we went out shopping this morning, actually, yes. which we haven't done in a long time. And we have this place called... Um, what's Fabric it? Land. Fabric Land. I don't know if you have it in America, if you have it in Scotland or Australia. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we have Fabric Land here in Canada. Right. And it usually has good sales on every once in a while. Right. It can be expensive if you don't get yeah, the sales. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And you get a membership card and you can get things a little bit cheaper. Right. So today we went in and I noticed a lot of this stuff was 75% off. And um, we got all these sort of jump rings. They were regular $18. Right. And we got them for $4.50. It like was a Like there's packages, bargain. like different sizes, which exactly. will be really it's handy really when helpful. you do your little stitch uh, markers. Stitch markers. Yes, absolutely. We got these things that are great, little charms. Exactly. And I said, I could make earrings. I'm just telling you. Yeah. And these were regular $10. Right. And they were like two dollars and fifty cents. That's brilliant. Like two dollars and fifty cents. Exactly. You couldn't make those for two dollars and fifty cents. You could not. That's for sure. So uh, we picked up some of those, and Colleen got some rope, or I don't know what you call it. It's not rope. It's, it's called like, waxed cotton. And you got that for some project bags you're going to exactly. try. Exactly. Yep. Absolutely. That'll be interesting. That wasn't on sale, but it was still a good deal. But because I have the membership, then I got it on sale. On sale. And then these little uh, pins, I don't know, eye pins, I guess. Yep. They were regularly five dollars for a dollar twenty-five. Exactly. You couldn't make an eye pin for a dollar twenty-five. All those That's for sure. So I'm feeling really good with our bargains today. Yeah, we did really well today. And then, you know, I'm I'm not a sewer. No. But I love looking <laughs> at all the material, the different patterns and different things. Mm -hmm. And when I'm doing my miniatures, I noticed you have to have a very small pattern for Correct. everything you exactly. do. Otherwise. Yeah. You know, your miniatures look exactly. just out of proportion. Yeah. So I was able to buy something that I could use in my miniatures. Uh, it's not really patterned. Right. Um, so you wouldn't be able to see that. No, and that's actually good because you were talking about making a couch out yes. of that. And it's good if you're not trying to match up a plaid when you're trying to make your miniature couch. Yes. Matching up apparently is difficult. Yes. I haven't tried that yet. Now this, I love the color of this. I and know. it's got little tiny white polka dots, which is perfect for right. miniatures because you don't have the big mm -hmm. dots. And that'll be perfect. Now I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I know this is your favorite color. Yes. Would you like me to make you a mask out of that color? What do you think? I think it looks oh. great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little thick yeah. right there. Yeah. But you yeah. just let me know. I know well, it's she it bought actually, it for her miniatures. It's really nice, but it actually looks like a hospital mask. Oh, okay. Yep, you've got a point. You know, yep. and you've made some nice other nice masks. Okay. Yeah, I really okay. like this color. I don't know what we could use this for. Maybe drapes, maybe um, a bedspread, pillows, bedspreads, mm -hmm. that kind Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. So I could go crazy on material. You could. I really You're could. Very I love good. it. But I get this on sale. This was uh, like five dollars a meter. A meter. Yep. This was five dollars a yep. meter. And I'm working on a project, and you'll see it for next podcast. It's polymer clay, mm -hmm. and I needed a little bit of this material. 
Right. For that. But I'm not going to share that with you until your next podcast. We have to watch okay. that. Okay. And Excellent. this is the perfect size I need. Again, it's a miniature, so I needed this really small, small check. check. Yeah, exactly. And they were able to have that. So it was a really fun shopping day we yeah, had we today. Did. Absolutely. Um, that was about all we got there, wasn't it? That's was there right. anything else yep. you got there? You got your membership. And yes, I had to uh, renew it. So Yeah. So it was a great day for shopping. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So that's our souvenirs. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, comment down below. If there's a craft you want us to give it a try, let us know. If there's something that you are enjoying and would like to see more of, let us know that. We're always glad to hear from you. And I just want to remind you that if you put a comment in and it doesn't show up, the reason why is we hold it for review because we just don't want to take a chance that somebody's going to say something. I'm okay to take a negative comment, but if it's got words in there that we don't want the world to right. have to see that we yeah. take We them. want world peace, and we do really want world peace at this time. <laughs> Absolutely. Our hearts are with the Ukrainian uh, people at this time. So. Exactly. If you're interested in watching May's video about her polymer clay babies, just keep a heads up because she's going to be putting that up in the very near future. Hopefully today or tomorrow, maybe next week or something. That would be great. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, you take care.